Hello and welcome to this Cakes and Scones with Ravi Shastri Thoughts. I mean, the honeymoon, real serious start, you won everything, great record, but people are saying these 12 months, your legacy, Virat's legacy, team's legacy. See, people are saying 12 months, people will say 24 months. For me, it started the day I took the job. And nothing changes in the way we approach any other month. Because for us, all opposition is the same. All opposition has to be respected. Every game is a home game. And as it turns out, next month is in South Africa. Now, where South Africa is different is that we've never won a series in South Africa. So therein lies a massive opportunity for the team to do something special. The belief is there. We are going there and we'll treat South Africa like we've treated every other opposition we've played against. There'll be respect, but we go there to win. We go there to play to win. Your colleague and one of our friends, Bharat Arun, was saying, we've never won a series in Australia either. Yeah. In 2014, when you landed and he was talking to me about what you said to the team, uh, will you say that to my viewers? Because I thought what Arun said was a transformatory statement coming from the coach. It's very similar to what I've told you now, is that, you know, we know what Australia does to teams when uh, teams go there. I mean, and what I said was the last two tours we came here, we lost 4-0, 4-0. And don't be afraid of it being 4-0 again. As long as you get out on the park and show them a brand of cricket where you're competing, where you're prepared to look them in the eye and play cricket as hard as they play. After that, you lose, I give two hoots. For me, it is how you compete on the field. Winning, losing, will it'll all take its own turns, you know, as it would happen. But the way you play the game, the body language, the intent, you know, the, uh, the commitment, the work ethics that go in, the preparation before the start of a series, if all that is in place, you will play good cricket. And uh, let me assure you, the, the brand of cricket people saw in Australia was uh, something they had not seen in a long, long time from an Indian team. And it just showed in the World Cup. The World Cup that happened after that, I mean, the great run we had till we lost in the semis was thanks to that tour and thanks to the cricket we played. <clears throat> so what we are seeing now, can we actually say that it started in Australia in 2014? Absolutely. started in Australia and then it really hit home in Sri Lanka. You know, when we lost a test match which we had dominated for three and a half days and you lose it in literally one session, one poor session, that opened the eyes of everybody. You know, and, uh, you know, there was a stage where we sat in the dressing room for two hours after the game. You know, where each player questioned himself. I mean, it was like looking into a mirror and asking questions about yourself. Did you stand up and why didn't you stand up if you didn't? And the rest is history because they came out in the open. Everything came out in the open. They were honest with themselves. You know, we were very tentative, what came out of that, you know, and uh, we said, we're never going to play cricket like that again. If we have to lose again, we lose it in, an, in another way, but not by being tentative. See, you've always said to me, I mean, on the phone, uh, when you and I have spoken, that this team is not afraid of losing. And maybe that's a quality that, and the whole aggression and the whole winning mentality, I mean, if I am asked as an analyst of the game to identify one thing, comparison with Federer, comparison with Brazil, comparison with teams, is this winning mentality. Winning from nowhere, from losing positions. That, I think, is a hallmark of this team. It is, because there's self-belief. There's tremendous self-belief in each individual that plays. This team doesn't depend on one or two players. You know, they know there are seven or eight or nine guys out there who can perform. If all 11 perform, nothing like it. But, you know, if you see any successful team, it will always have six or seven guys performing all the time. And you don't know which six or seven. That's the beauty. You know, you might have six or seven in one game. The six or seven in the next game could be the four guys who have not performed in the last game. That is the beauty about this side. Ravi, when I talk about South Africa, specifically South Africa, be it the 96-97, 2001, 2004, 5, 6 tour, the one missing link was perhaps what is now Hardik Pandya, a fast bowling all-rounder. Is that the case? I mean, 
How important is that fast bowling all-rounder in your scheme of things? It's very important. You know, I have always believed in combinations and getting the right balance. But for me, the most important thing about this team is it's team. It's not individuals. The word I can be very thrown out of the window. It's we. We went together. We go down together. Individuals can stay at home if they're not part of the team culture. And no matter how big the individual. That is the difference with this team. You have seen molded Virat from being a champion batsman into a champion captain and now perhaps the best in the world. Can you help me decode Virat now that he's actually going into a series or a phase which will define his legacy? You and I spoke in Mumbai in September when you had taken over and you'd just come back from Sri Lanka and you told me, wait for the next 18, 24 months, he can be the, you know, one of the greatest captains India has seen. See, the, the great thing about Virat is you know, his work ethics. You know, his realization as to what kind of player he can become and what it takes to become that kind of player. So the emphasis on fitness, you know, the sacrifice that he has to put through, you know, a lot of things that he would want to do as a 27, 28-year-old, but he has to can that with the view of achieving what he wants to achieve. And it's become part of his lifestyle, which is fantastic. So what happens then when you have a captain in that state of mind, you know, wanting to achieve things that, you know, people can only dream of, then it rubs off on the other players. It's like a disease. Happy disease. It's a very happy disease. And, uh, you know, the others want to emulate him. He wants to raise the bar for himself. And he doesn't want to leave any room for excuses. That's another thing with this team. If you fail, we failed. Not because there was rain there or that empire gave a bad decision. Or if that would have happened, we don't want no excuses. We lost because we played badly. We won because we played well. And leave it at that. So basically what you see is what you get. Absolutely. With this no less, no more. What I see in this team and what is different, take Tendulkar. When 2012, 13, 14 people were gunning for Tendulkar's head. For goodness gracious me, Sachin Tendulkar comes once in a lifetime. Not even a lifetime, a century. I'm seeing the same with MS Dhoni. I mean, questions have been asked. What is different here though is captain coach. The two people that decide and run this team have backed MS Dhoni like pillars. That for me is a very different India. Is that the case? And can you talk about that? And why would we do so? <coughs> We're not stupid. I've been watching the game, playing the game, being part of the team last 35 years. Virat's been in the scene for a decade now, you know, almost a decade. We know what's there. At his age, 36, he will outbeat players who are 26. You know, people who talk. You know, they sometimes forget they also played the game. And if they look themselves in the mirror and ask them the question, what they were at 27, would they have run two runs faster? By the time they finish two, this fellow will finish three at this age. And then he's won only two World Cups. He averages only 50 plus. Till today, you don't have a wicket keeper to replace him in the one day game. And you talk, and we don't, and we shouldn't support him. See, Am I mad? I think this is this is the difference because even in 2007-8 Australia, the way our seniors have been weeded out, you yourself included, Kapil, you, there has been a culture of negativity, and I'm suddenly seeing a culture of positivity where you and Virat seem to be holding and embracing MS, saying. You are welcome. That, for me, is a welcome change in Indian cricket. Because he's still one of the best around. And not in Indian cricket, in world cricket. You know, just look at his match awareness when he plays a one-day game or a T20 game. You know, the street smartness. 
but he brings into play, you know, behind the stumps, you know, when to anticipate a run out, you know, when to do the things he does with the gloves when it comes to stumpings. And of course, his, uh, his power batting towards the end. You know, it, it's some of the things you see with him are not bought or sold in the market. You will you not see, get it anywhere. You see a T20 future for him still? Specifically T20 future? I mean, there's not much, there's nothing happening uh, World Cup wise. But, you know, the fact that he doesn't play test match cricket, it's important that he plays as much cricket as he can, you know, till the World Cup in 2019. So, you know, I, I think he should be playing as much as he can. Coming to the bowling unit, I mean, the Ravi Shastri team of the 90s, late 80s, to now, is this the best crop of all-round bowlers that you and Bharat Arun have nurtured? Is this the best Indian unit that you have seen? It is. It's a very good Indian unit. I'll compare it with the uh, Indian units of the 80s, early 80s. You know, when you won the World Cup, when you won the World Championship, you had a lot of all-rounders. You know, you had five or six bowlers who could be used. And something similar is happening now. You know, with Hardik there, you know, he lends a lot of balance. Those days you had, uh, you know, a couple. You know, you had a lot of guys who would bat in the top six and still bowl their 10 overs, you know. I would bowl my 10 bat in the top six. Jimmy was there. There was, you know, Roger, Madan who could all bat. You know, so it, it, it was, it made a huge difference. And when you look at this side, I think where this side beats all sides is fielding. The electricity that they show on the field, you know, that you can see as a viewer. Uh, you, I have not seen it with any other side. The other thing that I think this team beats any other side, I have seen Indian cricket for 25, 30 years, is attitude. Like when you all travelled overseas, the idea was even if we draw or whatever, I mean, you were different, you'd give it back. But, I mean, others, if the Australians would chirp, we'd come, become quiet. I mean, if somebody chirps at Virat... Like I told gracious. you before the Australian series, you know, we, you saw the Australian series, and I think it's very simple, you know. You understand their language, and you can speak their language. So if they utter a word, there's no harm in giving three back. You know, one in their language and two in your own language. How does it matter? That's also a change in attitude from the How does it matter? You know, as long as it doesn't uh, affect your concentration, you don't cross the line, you know, you, know, you don't tickle the match referee. What's wrong in that? South Africa also waiting for India, Ravi. In terms of batting, Ajinkya Rahane, Cheteshwar Pujara, Kale Rahul, Virat Kohli. Maybe not Kale Rahul, he's not travelled to South Africa as a test match batsman. But these guys have been in South Africa in the past. Does that help? It does help. You know, they've played against a lot of the South African bowlers in IPL cricket over the years as well. And they know what they're up against. You know, South Africa, in South Africa, uh, one of the toughest sides in the world. And we have taken it upon us to be a side that can adapt to conditions and treat all conditions like home. Because if you look at world cricket today, there's not one team in the world that travels well. So we can be that team. Provided, you know, we show a lot of ticker when we go to South Africa. You know, we know the conditions are tough, but how quickly we can overcome those conditions and, you know, get your A game to the plate is important. And we want to compete. You know, we are looking forward to this series like uh, never before because, you know, the opportunity is there in front of us. And we've got a team that wants to compete in whatever conditions uh, they play in. Opening. You, you've done it, got hundreds in difficult conditions, South Africa, West Indies, Australia, double hundred. It will be very, very important in conditions like this with Shikhar and maybe Kail Rahul or whoever. Australia, England, South Africa, New Zealand. If you have to win a series, you need your top four or five to fire, especially ideally opening. If the top two can fire, that's a lot of work, you know, that's, that'll help, you know, the middle order as well as the bowlers to take those 20 wickets. So I think the, the first three will have a big role to play to see that new ball off and then to be able to dominate you know, as the game progresses. You know, that's, that's the key. Luckily, you know, the, these players have got the experience now. 
you know, you can't call this a young side. It's young. But at the same time, they've got some cricket under their belt. You know, they've been overseas, like you mentioned. So, you know, that should come in handy. One thing that stood out for this team in Australia, 2014, was, you know, when, when a team chases 350 plus on the last day, it's generally that we've seen them going into a shell. And then you get bundled out in four hours if you try and save. They gave it back. They counter-attacked, they got to 350. And they lost by, what, 15, yeah, 17 yeah. minutes. That was different to see. See, and that will be the approach, very similar approach, even uh, when we go to South Africa. Counter-attack. Yeah, yeah. Because for the, after a long time, you've got a bowling attack that can also take 20 wickets. And we don't, ma we don't mind whatever conditions we have to play in. Because we've got the variety in the bowling that can take 20 wickets in all conditions. That you mentioned variety. I mean, one fellow who people will want to watch out for, Ravi Ashwin, huge record. 300-odd wickets in 50 test matches is something miraculous. And someone of his caliber. But the question has been asked over and over again. Graham Swan in England, English conditions, won in Australia. Can Ravi Ashwin win India test match in overseas? Mm -hmm. Why not? He is, is a top-class operator. You know, and... Uh, I think he's going at the right time in his career on these tours of uh, South Africa, England, Australia. And uh, he brings a lot to the plate, you know, with his experience, his quality, his, the variety he has in his, uh, in his bowling. Plus, you know, he's, uh, he's a proven test match player with an outstanding record. And let's not forget his batting. You know, at number six or seven, he's, he's a more than handy bat. You know, for me, it... The question will be to keep challenging him, to bat time, not runs. If he can bat three and a half hours for me, or challenge himself to bat three hours, three and a half, he'll get more than 70. He's got that many shots, and he's a beautiful timer of the ball. So if he can give, get that into play, then you're, then you're talking of a proper Ashwin there. You were in my city in Kolkata about a month back for the India-Sri Lanka test match. And the first day that India practiced, Ravi Ashwin was bringing a lot of intensity into practice. You were standing as umpire and watching him. And I could see a sense of camaraderie that I've, I've not seen. I mean, mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I thought Ashwin was getting the con kind of confidence he needs at this point in time. Can you talk to me about He's that? He's a world-class operator. You know, it's just getting back into the groove. You know, he... There's so much cricket being played. You, ideally, you might want him in all formats. But, you know, you've got to protect your principal bowlers of test match cricket. Because in our country, you know, public memory is very short. And with some, someone like Borea, every match has to be won. <laughs> you know, people will talk 2019 World Cup. That's a long time to go. That's why we treat every, every game as the game to focus on, live in the present. So, very important from Ashwin's point of view that you rest him nicely and keep him fresh for these big series. To, to put this debate to rest once and for all, I mean, we have all been asking this question and we have asked, I have asked this question of Bharat Arun also as our bowling coach in the interview that I had done with him. What is the game plan with, I mean, the country wants to sort of understand this. Chahal and Kuldeep was preferred for a while in home conditions. Jadeja and Ashwin were playing domestic cricket. Are these guys still in your scheme of things, World Cup 2019, or are they being treated as test match specialists? What is happening with this crop? Current form and ability to take wickets in the middle overs will decide who plays the World Cup. So no one's out of reckoning? No one's out of reckoning. No one can take his place for granted either. Ability to take wickets in the middle overs and current form will be crucial for not just the spinners, any of the bowlers, to say, yes, we'll get into the squad for the World Cup. And coming to the faster bowlers, Umesh, Shami, Bhuvi, Bumra, Ishant, there's a lot of variety. And, 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 and you were instrumented in getting Arun into the setup as your partner. But this kind of variety is heartening. I mean, Bumrah's Yorkers in the one-day game, winning matches. Can you talk to me about the, the, this whole fast bowling unit? I mean, you've got one of the b best around. I mean, for David Warner to say, you know, that this is probably the best two you might encounter, Bumrah and Bhuvi. And he was not far off the mark because, you know, we saw even in the games against New Zealand, who are a terrific side, you know, the way these two stood up when the heat was on, you know. The variety they brought in, the discipline they brought into play, 
and uh, was great to see you know the just the the variations the slow bounce of the yorkers the slower deliveries you know terrific to see and uh, you know let's hope we get two three more bowlers like that you know on the fringe who then will make a terrific indian bowling attack and will hardik be under pressure now that there's so much talk about hardik being the x factor player etc etc he's got a great temperament you know as he's already shown he and the good thing about the kid is he loves his cricket he enjoys his cricket you know he he for him it's theatre it's it's a, it's it's a stage to express himself and uh, i mean we are not going to stop him in any way from doing that just go and express yourself what i love about this current setup and i have said this in the past to you the dressing room is a happy dressing room i mean i the one postcard memory for me i think it was that eight over game against new zealand you arun the support staff was sitting in the dugout and india was some 35 or 40 for four you still smiling i mean one could sense that there is an innate confidence and it's a happy confident bunch talk to me about that i mean that's the most important thing i mean what we keep discussing that's the most important is forget or everything else enjoy this period because you're a great team enjoy this period because who are great great already it's a great team it's a great team uh, make no mistake already if you compare to other indian teams this is already a great team no matter what happens you know already the things they have done it's a great team it can be a terrific cricket team perhaps if one they of the achieve, best of all time if they have the, a good next two years oh if they have a ne- good next two years this will be the best team of all time no question about it yeah because we've not won in south africa or australia yeah. or and, and already it. these guys have won in sri lanka twice they beat in australia 3-0 in australia in a one day series you know they've beaten england in a one day series after 24 years you know they've they've done so many things already this side home and away they've won asia cups they've been in semi finals of world cups so they've done a lot of very good things but i think they're still not there they're still 30% or 40% of the game there's another 60% which only they can tap and that will come in the next 2 years and ravi champion mentality final couple of questions before i i i let you go and celebrate christmas at home roger federer rafa nadal if 2017 has to be remembered it has to be remembered for never say never be it leo messi taking argentina to russia roger federer rafa nadal australian open and now i mean it it is as if these champions keep rediscovering so maybe there's ms dhoni for for cricket virat kohli getting into his prime how do you view that that sport age is just no longer important it is not age is just a number it, at the end of the day all the names you mention one quality i have they have is tremendous self belief in their own ability every name you took there that is the prime quality that individual has and when you have that self belief you can pull off a game from anywhere you can get runs in any conditions you can defy age you can win grand slams any time you know federer showed it nadal showed it you can get 100 with five wickets down you can still get 100 it's about pushing barriers and that comes only with self belief and all these guys have it every name you took final question realistically ravi shastri going into that flight in south africa what is the mindset what is the expectation what is the hope i'm dying to get on the flight i'm dying to land in cape town as quickly as possible unfortunately it will take us 14 hours if i could get there in 3 hours but is the I'd preparation time enough sorry is the preparation time enough no we would always want more i mean the ftps have been done long back but in future at least 2 weeks like look at australia you know england going to australia they've landed on the 27th of october and they played 23rd november. of november so because of the ftps you might not have that much time all i'm asking you know at least on these big tours at least 10 to 14 days but the this won't be an excuse not an excuse we are not looking for any excuses there's no excuse 10 to 14 days would be ideal we'll take what we get there's some serious talk there i mean no no debate no debate i mean this is a fact that come july of this year when this team came together under this support unit 
this has been a happy bunch. They've beaten everyone. They've beaten England. They've beaten New Zealand. They've beaten Australia. Can they redefine history and do something in South Africa, England, and Australia? And as he said, if they do, we will, all of us, will have to say this is the best Indian cricket team of all time. Ravi Shastri, many thanks for talking to me. Pleasure. You're on the cusp of history. Hopefully you create history. Opportunities. You know, uh, you know when there are opportunities, grab it. Go for it. Grab it. Go for it. And which we'll I'm going to do now with your cake. Correct. We'll go for our cake. Thanks for watching.